morning. Thank you for coming today for morning prayer. Everything that you need is either in this bulletin or in your book of common prayer. We'll begin with the Invitatory and Psalter, which you will find on page 80 in your prayer books. O oh Lord, open our lips. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. And we will continue with Christ our Passover on page 83 in your prayer books. Please be seated. Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. The next thing is Psalm 116. Bruce taught us all how to sing this psalm last week, and we'll be doing the same thing this week. So I encourage everybody who is able to, to please sing the psalm um, at this time. <coughs> from the Acts of the Apostles. 
Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Therefore, let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you have crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. The word of the Lord. We will remain seated and recite Canticle 8, the Son of Moses, together. It's on page 85 in your prayer books. I will sing to the Lord, for he is lofty and uplifted, the horse and its rider as he hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my refuge. The Lord has become my savior. This is my God, and I will praise him, the God of my people, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a mighty warrior. Yahweh is his name. The chariots of Pharaoh and his army has he hurled into the sea. The finest of those who bear armor have been drowned in the Red Sea. The fathomless deep has overwhelmed them. They sank into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in might. Your right hand, O Lord, has overthrown the enemy. Who can be compared with you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, glorious in holiness, awesome in renown, and worker of wonders? You stretched forth your right hand, the earth swallowed them up. With your constant love, you led the people you redeemed. With your might, you brought them in safety to your holy dwelling. You will bring them in and plant them on the mount of your possessions. The resting place you have made for yourself, O Lord, the sanctuary, O Lord, that your hand established. The Lord shall reign forever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of Paul. If you invoke as Father the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him, you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, Love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed, through the living and enduring word of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. 
stand and we will recite together Canticle 21 on page 95 in your prayer books. You are God, we praise you. You are the Lord, we acclaim you. You are the eternal Father. All creation worships you. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of the apostles praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church proclaims you, Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you did not shun the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come to be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, brought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to everlasting glory. A reading from the book of Luke, chapter 24, verses 13 to 35. Now on that same day, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Clopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us, that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter, enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to him. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to him, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scripture to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been known to them in the breaking of the bread. The word of the Lord.
Please be seated. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord. If I had to pick one word to summarize the gospel lesson for today, I would pick the word surprise. In last week's gospel lesson, we heard about Thomas, who was somewhat skeptical that the rest of the disciples, who were basically in hiding at the time, had actually seen the risen Lord. Today, in this passage from Luke, we learn about more people who are surprised. This time, it's Clopas and another unnamed person. Some scholars believe that the two people walking on the road to Emmaus may have actually been a husband and wife team, returning to their home in Emmaus after having been in Jerusalem at the time of the crucifixion and burial of Jesus. These people had a long time to walk and talk. According to the version of Luke that we use today, the distance they had to go was seven miles. Yesterday, I spoke with a friend of mine who visited the Holy Land and had walked along what is believed to be the road to Emmaus in 1977. And I asked him about this experience. He said, well, it was actually a pretty nice walk. You know, it was the middle of the day. He was with a bunch of friends. But I'm thinking, you know, maybe the roads had a chance to improve in 2,000 years. But it's not like a really horrible, horrible, you know, trek, the seven miles. As Clopas and Mrs. Clopas are walking, they get their very first surprise. Another traveler kind of shows up from absolutely nowhere. Not only that, this guy is uninformed, at least they think so. This man didn't seem to know anything about Jesus' crucifixion. Where had this guy been hiding anyway for the last three days? This is the biggest news story in all of Jerusalem, at least according to the disciples. Then the mystery man launches into a lesson on the prophets, the Old Testament history, and the life and teaching of Jesus. Uh, Clopas, of course, is even more surprised. Eventually, these three travelers make it to Emmaus, which is kind of a mystery now because there's lots of little villages and towns in the Holy Land that have Emmaus as part of their name, but nobody's really sure of which exact Emmaus they ended up in. So it's a mystery. The disciples invite the other guy, who they still haven't recognized as Jesus, to come with home and to, with them and have dinner. And here a surprise shows up again. He was known to us in the breaking of the bread. The same act which the disciples had shared with Jesus just a few days before, and which we participate in every time we receive Eucharist, opens the eyes of Clopas and company to the identity of Christ. At that very moment, though, Jesus disappears, leaving Clopas awed and dumbfounded. He's certainly not confused, but he's definitely surprised again. The news of the empty tomb, the message of the angels, and the reports of the women from that very morning could no longer be discounted. The surprise turned to joy as Clopas hoofs it back to Jerusalem to excitedly relate to the other disciples that Christ has physically been present with them in Emmaus. Now this to me is kind of surprising. They've just walked seven miles from Jerusalem back to whichever Emmaus it was, and now it's after dark. This is not the time people travel. It was dangerous to be out after dark to travel. There were no lights on the roads. That's when you had the murderers, the robbers, everybody who you don't want to run into. They're out at night, so people didn't, who wanted to stay safe stayed home. This, they're so worked up about what has happened that they go straight back seven more miles now, those of you who did the AIDS walk last week, I'm sure you wanted to do it all again right after you finished, right? That's what I thought. Okay, so they've, they've it was so important, they go right back again. So imagine the discussion that followed when it turned out that in the course of that day and evening, there are other verifiable sightings of Jesus that has taken place. The sighting by Simon is mentioned particularly. Christ surprised the disciples then, despite having told them in advance that he had to die to be resurrected. They kind of didn't get it. So, how is the element of surprise in today's gospel relevant to us in 2017? First, we need to remember that Christ is always with us. 
And with that in mind, though, can Christ still surprise us today? I contend that if we open our minds and hearts to Christ, particularly through prayer, that every day can hold the prospect of being surprised by Christ. Furthermore, that surprise can also spur each of us to do what Clopas did, move forth in love. Notice that Clopas and the other followers of Christ did not hide the fact that they had seen Jesus and simply keep it to themselves. They immediately went and shared the news with others. Luke tells us that the news was shared with other believers, but there's no reason to assume it wasn't shared with people who were not followers of Christ. In the first lesson, for example, from Acts, we see Peter himself sharing Christ's message of redemption with a crowd of folks who clearly at the beginning of that section are not believers. Uh, by the end, though, he's had a mass baptism, 3,000 more people who are following Christ. Clopas's surprise encounter with the risen Lord caused him to go out and commit an act of love, sharing the good news of Christ and of our salvation. What is stopping us from doing the same thing? Amen. We'll continue with the Apostles' Creed found on page 96 in your prayer books. I believe in God. Good morning again. We have two brief announcements this morning. First, church cleanup. It's going to be on May 20th. That's a Saturday at 9 a.m. We are looking for people to come and help with that. If you're interested, do kindly show up. Also, for Pentecost, a couple of years ago, we had the gospel, or we had uh, some of the lessons that day read in languages other than English, and we're looking to do that again this year. Therefore, if you are comfortable reading in public in a foreign language, uh, call the office, talk to Bruce. Talk to 
Bruce, uh, let us know who you are so that we can, uh, the office can plan accordingly. Are there any other announcements? Yes, sir. Go for it. Okay. Let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor to the Lord.
come of thee, O Lord. We will continue now with the general thanksgiving. It's on page 101 in your prayer books. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for your creation preservation, and all the blessing of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. And following on page 102, the prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-loved Son that when two or three are gathered together in your name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen.
and serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen.